As of uh, this is GF Legible from GamerFusion.com. What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about the map Widow's Court and how you could try to go flawless if you're carrying or being carried on Widow's Court, what you will need to do, what weapons should use, and what type of callouts you need to have to actually guarantee this flawless or try to get to the lighthouse and get as many wins as possible. So if you guys find this video helpful and informative, make sure you guys leave a comment and a like. Also, don't forget guys to hit that sub box if you haven't so already, if you want to stay up to date to Destiny stuff and tips on how to get better at PvP. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into this topic. So first and foremost, Widow's Court is a map that has two different spawns. One has the upper spawn and a lower spawn. So think of it mostly like a hill. One team is going to be spawning on the top. One team is going to be spawning on the bottom. Now, it's very important for you guys to know callouts. Callouts are going to be very fundamental when actually playing on this map. You're going to want to know where to notify your team of where the enemy is at. The reason is because since this map tends to be very open space and has a lot of long paths, usually teams tend to split off when one of their teammates goes down. So, for example, if one of your teammates is down, usually what tends to happen is the two disperse and either you get separated or both of you are together and your teammate that is down is going to be pretty much your recon and he's going to be able to let you guys know exactly where the team is actually pushing you from or where they're sitting to actually snipe you. This is a very sniper heavy uh, map. It's going to be very predominant that if you're not a good sniper, you're going to want to have at least your shotgun out and know where to go, where to bait the enemy to actually use your shoddy. Because usually since this is such a heavily favored sniper map, the majority of the teams you're going to be going up against will be sniping. So like I said, callouts are very important. So right off the bat, let me go ahead and punch out this map to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. So if you spawn on the lower portion of the map, there's going to be probably identifier is on the right hand side. You're going to have the church. There's the back of the church. And in front of the church is the fountain. The fountain is where spawn to actually, you know, when the time goes to overtime spawns. All right, to your left hand side, you're going to have the castle. The castle is pretty much the thing that overlooks the church and the fountain. On the back side of the castle, you have the garden. On the on the right hand side, if you guys ever play control, pretty much the B flag is the courtyard. And if you spawn on the upper side of the spawn, you're going to have the graveyard, which is pretty much where all the cars are at and where the top heavy is and the hut, which is where usually some people like to stand up and sit there and snipe. So there you guys have both spawns, which you guys are going to be need to know to know if you make a call out. So if you go down and someone, if you spawn on the lower side and the team is pushing courtyard, you just tell your teammates, hey, they're on courtyard, they're heading to castle. That way your teammates know where they're at. Or vice versa, if you spawn on the upper hand side, you could say, hey, you know what, they're by the fountain or they're by the church and your teammates will know exactly where they're at. Now, as far as what weapons should you use for this map? I'm going to recommend a couple of weapons. If you don't have them, maybe try to get one before you hop in trials. So this map tends to be a long range map. Unfortunately, us auto rifles won't be so predominant unless you're getting close to the target. Still very, still workable, but I'll explain what type of, uh, you know, loadout you're going to want to have. So if you are a shotgunner and you are not good with a sniper, you're going to want to have the following weapons, either in primary of the falling, you're going to want to have a Mida, which Sir is selling, and you could definitely pick it up. You could either have a Malak, which is the weapon, you know, we've been farming for for a long time, or the Hacksaw. Those are going to be your best weapons to actually pick up and go into, um, pretty much into the match if you guys are running a shotgun. If you're running a sniper, you're probably going to run, of course, you're pretty much primarily going to be using your sniper, but of the offset weapon, you're going to want to have a last word or a doctoring of passing or pretty much any weapon that will help you at a close range in case you are getting pushed. Usually snipers tend to hard scope a lot within this map, so they will most likely get pushed and you have an enemy surprise them. So you're going to want to have a weapon that you're able to fend off the enemy. So those are the main weapons you're going to want to go ahead. As far as structure is concerned, when you spawn in with a team of three, my ideal structure would probably be have two snipers and one shotgunner. You're going to mostly want to have the two snipers watching a particular lane and uh, the person that's shotgunning, you're going to want to have them as a flanker. The reason why flanking is so important in this map is because it puts you at an advantage, especially if the team is hard scoping, they won't even be seeing you on the, they won't see you on the radar when you're approaching them because they're so concentrated on the snipe points. One key point I do want to let you guys know that's pretty much is going to be your predominant factor 
which will guarantee if you go flawless or not. When you get an orb on this map, it is very, very important that you hold down that orb. If the uh, enemy team gets the revive, it's going to put you at a major disadvantage. So holding that point is going to be fundamental and crucial when it comes to playing Widow's Court. If you kill someone and you get their orb, make sure you guys hold it down and let your teammates know that you got a pick, especially if you are sniping. It's going to be fundamental for you guys to actually have that. One thing I do want to let you guys know, if you guys are running with a team, definitely one quick revive person. Or Ideally, it would be awesome to have two people that have quick rest. But if you don't have two people, at least one person with quick rest will make a fundamental key uh, to this map because the, getting someone really quick is going to be very important. And if you don't know how to push people on this map, it is going to be a headache for your teammates because they are going to be getting rest snipe on this map because it's so sniper heavy. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have any tips or any suggestions that I did not mention in this video. Make sure you drop them down in the comment section down below. If you have any additional questions regarding the map, also let me know in the comment section down below. And let me know how far you have gotten in Charles. If you've gotten flawless, let me know. If you haven't gotten flawless, let me know how far you did with your card. Also, don't forget, we'll be streaming some trials. Also, be helping out some of the uh, people who are active on the stream and on the comment section to go follow us for the very first time. And don't forget to check that out if you have any spare time throughout the week. Don't forget, if you get some awesome plays on this map, to definitely go ahead and submit them to the top five plays of the week. Don't forget, guys, if you want to stay up to date to everything Destiny and the whole Destiny universe, make sure you hit that sub, and I will catch you guys on the next video.